Hello everyone, my name is Austin Shaner, and welcome back to my channel. Almost two months ago, we kicked off this cam series with a simple gift box design. So that way we could cover more of the fundamentals, like setting up your stock, your tools, the differences between 2D and 3D toolpaths, and what options are available in each. In the second part, we covered order of operations, which is basically a thought exercise on analyzing the constraints you'll need to pay attention to as you program the cam for your design. So that way we order our toolpaths in such a way that we produce successful parts. In part three, we went in depth on how to program a guitar body using my fixture method to help us with two-sided machining. If you haven't watched those videos or you're just getting started with cam, I definitely recommend you watch them first so that way everything I'm gonna be doing in this video will make a lot more sense. So today, we're finally gonna be programming the cam for the guitar neck that I produced on this channel. If you'd like to see how I modeled this neck or the headstock, you can check out my six part series or my more recent headstock transition videos. Links will be in the description below. But fair warning, this is gonna be a pretty long video. So if you'd like to skip ahead, timestamps will be in the description below. So let's not waste any more time and dig right in. Okay, so jumping into Fusion, just like before, let's take a second to analyze this neck and see what kind of constraints we need to pay attention to as we're programming the cam. So constraint number one is that we have a two-sided design. So if we take a second and hide our fixture and we flip this over, you can see that on the top side we have our truss rod slot that we're gonna need to mill out. And we have a cutaway here so that way we have uh, some string angle so that way they're not coming perfectly parallel out of the nut. And what's interesting is this leaves us with one flat side. So that way we know what we need to do is we need to machine this side first, then flip it over and machine the other side. And just like before, I've set up a fixture system to help me with aligning these in both orientations, which we'll talk more about in a second. But basically I have a fixture that helps me align it on the top side. And then when we flip the part over, I have, a, I have the same fixture just flipped 180. So that way we can machine the other side. Constraint number two is that we have 3D surfaces, meaning the headstock transition area and the neck and this heel transition, these are not planar surfaces, which that means we know that we're gonna need to do some 3D roughing strategies and then come back in with a ball nose end mill and tidy those up and get a nice surface finish. Which also means that we're going to need at least one, if not two or more tool changes as well. And constraint number three is work holding. Because as we come around to cutting this final profile of the headstock and cutting the neck, we're going to need access to that entire outer contour, which means that we can't necessarily just hold on to it with clamps. We can do it with tabs, like I've mentioned in previous videos, but that kind of complicates this area right here on the neck. So the only area we'd really be able to hold on to is the heel and the headstock unless we wanted to actually come back and cut off and sand down the tabs on the neck. So what I'm gonna to opt to do in this case is we're going to be using blue tape and super glue. And if you're not familiar with this method, basically what you do is you lay down a strip of blue tape and then you put CA glue on it and then you put a strip of tape on the other part that you're going to be gluing it to and then you spray the activator and then put them together and it will adhere. And what's nice about that is it allows us to, if I hide my stock, it allows me to basically use this entire surface right here as work holding. So that way I don't have to actually clamp down once we flip the part over. So on this side we can just use clamps on the stock, but once I flip this part over, I need access to all the entire outer contour, so we're going to be using the blue tape method. So just like in my previous video, I'm going to be using a fixture to help me out with this. And I'm going to go over this a little bit again because I feel like it's really important to understand. But if you want more detail, you can go back to my guitar bodies video where I go into quite, quite great depth on it on why I do it this way. But here's where this one changes a little bit. So just like before, I've got um, a fixture here with dowel pins that allows me to locate this um, fixture on my work bed of my CNC. And then I've got dowel pin holes here and here as well. So if I bring up my stock, 
you can see that that's what's going to hold that stock in place and locate it to the fixture. And then I'm going to zero my work offsets on the fixture itself rather than off of the stock. And if you remember back to my guitar uh, body video, the reason I do that is because I can't trust my table saw or the cutting tools I have in my shop to produce accurately square cuts on my stock. And so what's nice about this again is that it divorces it from my it divorces my stock from my work offsets. So all I really need to do oh I I hided the wrong thing. So all I need to do is make sure that my stock covers this surface right here. As long as I do that, it doesn't matter if it sticks over, it's a little too long, if it's uh, not square in the corners, because my work offsets is relative to my dowel pins rather than my stock, which is really helpful. So all I need to do is basically make sure that my stock covers this area right here, and it's the correct thickness, which I can definitely do in my home shop. Now, the one thing I did in this fixture that I did not do in the guitar body one is I added an extra channel around the actual perimeter of my neck and I only did it up until the headstock and there's a good reason for that. So as we come in and you'll see this more later um, when we're doing the simulations but as we come in on this back of the neck with a ball end mill I need that ball end mill to actually come all the way on the side of this and I don't want it just plowing into my fixture. So I created a little recess here that is the depth of my ball end mill. So I'm using a quarter inch ball end mill, which means it has a one eighth inch um, depth on the ball end. And so my end mill can come all the way down into this channel as it's coming over. And that helps me a lot with making sure that I don't just crash into my fixture. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the manufacturing workspace and let's go ahead and get this started. So I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to bring back my fixture for the top side. Again, it's the same fixture. All I did was I created a duplicate of it and flipped it over so that way I have a fixture on both sides. So let's go ahead and let's set up our stock and let's start programming the top because we need to do that first. Then we'll flip it over and machine the other side. So let's go create new setup. And in that setup, oh, there we go, just took a second. In that setup, we want to say our stock point is instead of model orientation, sorry, instead of stock box point, let's do selected point. And we're going to select the corner of my fixture. And then we're going to say we want to, instead of using model orientation, let's select our X and Y axes. So I want my X axis to be going in this direction and I want my Y axis to be going in this direction. And you'll notice that the Y is pointing in the correct direction, but the X is pointing the opposite way. So all I need to do is come over here and hit flip X, which again will rotate it to from this side of the center point to this side. So now I've got my X going to the right, my Y going back in my machine, and my Z going up. So now what we need to do is select our model, which is this one right here. And then we'll say fixture. Um, we want to go ahead and let's open up our fixture and make sure we're selecting this component, not the entire thing, because that includes this component includes my stock. So let's select that component as my fixture. And then in stock, I can say from solid. And if I show my stock in this setup, I can click right here. And then there's my stock. So I have my work coordinate system set up to the corner of the fixture. I've got my model set up as my neck. I've got my fixture set up, which basically just allows Fusion to detect when it's going to crash into it and throw an error for me. And then I've got my stock, which I modeled up. Okay, so let's hide our stock because we don't need it anymore. And let's go ahead and change this to top so we can see this a little bit better here. Should make the lighting a little bit more forgiving. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to want to cut out the truss rod slot first because I typically use a quarter inch end mill for all of my roughing and finishing strategies, but I only use an eighth inch when I need to get into smaller details. And if we measure the distance between here and here, you can see that it's short, short of a quarter of an inch, which would be 0.25.
And since we're smaller than a quarter of an inch, I need to use an, use an eighth inch end mill for this. So I'm going to start off all my programs with an eighth inch end mill because this is the only time I'm going to use this bit as on the top side. So we'll start, that, we'll start there and then we will use a quarter inch flat for the remainder of the roughing and finishing. And then we will flip it over and we will continue using that quarter inch without changing our work offsets. Um, so that way we avoid an excess or an extra tool change. So let's go ahead and do 2D pocket. So we'll go 2D pocket. And let's go ahead and select this bottom edge right here. And then our tool. So if we come over to the tool tab, we want to say an eighth inch end mill or eighth inch flat, which I've already added from the previous guitar video. But if you, if you don't know how to set up tools, you can go back to that video and I show it quite in detail. So I'm going to use an eighth inch flat end mill, and I'm going to say 16,000 RPM, which is the bottom range of my router, which allows me to speed it up if I feel like I'm hogging out too much material at any given time. And then cutting feed rate, I tend to go a little bit more conservative with eighth inch end mills, so I'm going to go ahead and say 50 inches per minute. I could probably go a little bit faster, but that's okay. I can always speed up the router um, to compensate. And then heights. Right now it's set to selected contours, or I could say selection face. I tend to do that just to ensure that I'm going down to the depth that I want. And then what is our top height? Well, our top height is from stock top, which is right here. So that's fine. We don't need to change that. And we can probably leave the feed height, retract height, and clearance height the same. So I'm not going to touch those. And then we'll come over here to the passes tab. And let's say we want both ways. So that way it's not just cutting in one, then cutting another. It's actually going to zigzag back and forth. And then maximum step over, we want to take less than half of our bit. So I'm going to say 0 0.06 inches. So that way it's a little bit less than our bit. And stock to leave. I'm not going to leave any axial, which means going down into the slot. So I'm going to say zero for axial. And then radial, I'm going to leave 20 thousandths of an inch so I can come back and fine tune that fit with my truss rod and make sure I get a dead on fit. So we'll come back to that in a moment. And then in multiple depths, I'm going to say I don't want to take more than a 16th of an inch at a time, which is half of my end mill. I tend to be pretty conservative. I didn't put a point there. There we go tend to be pretty conservative with 8th eighth, eighth inch end mills as they can break pretty easily. And that's looking pretty good. I don't think we need any finishing passes. So let's go ahead and let's say our start point or our entry point. So if I come over into the linking tab and say entry positions, I want to enter in from this side. I don't want to enter in from the end um, because there's going to be a lead in and when there's a lead in it's going to leave a little bit of extra material or it's not leave a little bit, it's going to cut a little bit of an extra. And I want it to cut within the section that we're already going to be cutting some more in. So I'm going to go ahead and select right there. And let's hit OK and see what happens. OK, so we've got, a, got our program here. Let's go ahead and simulate it and see what it looks like. And again, I like to use comparison because I feel like it really helps me analyze, am I actually getting through all the material and it helps me know if I have any stock still left over that I need to clean up. So let's go ahead and hit play. That's a little fast. And let's do transparent so we can see it a little bit better and hide our body. Let's look at it from this angle. Yep. Okay, so it's coming up and it's tapering back down on the way back. So we should be good. We don't have any errors. And let's hide our transparency. Yes, we did reach the bottom, but we did not reach the sidewall because we left stock to leave. So that's why this is still blue. So that's perfect. So I'm going to hit close on that one. And what we're just going to do is we're just going to duplicate this for the next two. So we're going to go, you can either go create derived operation, 2D milling, and it will, anything you select here will maintain the same selections and settings you set up on the previous one. But instead, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click and hit duplicate. And then in this one, I'm going to hit edit. 
bring back my body, and instead of this contour, I'm going to set this contour. And I should just be able to hit OK, but let's see if I need to add any additional offsets. No, I do not, because it added an additional one in there. So we should be good there. And then let's go ahead and on this one, let's actually edit it real quick. We're going to say no stock to leave because this is not a critical dimension. It's just a cavity, essentially, for the spoke of my truss rod to sit in. So I don't care if the sidewall here is, you know, a little off. So I can just uncheck stock to leave, so that way it hits the sidewall. And then let's duplicate this one as well. And in the final one, I'm going to hit edit. And I'm going to uncheck this one and check this bottom one. Now I've modeled in the radiuses here because I, that way I could make sure that I had enough of a flat spot for my spoke to press up against as I'm tightening the truss rod. Um, but essentially, this is already set up for a 1 8 inch end mill. Uh, so it's got a 16th of an inch radius right here. Hit OK. And so that's kind of what we're left with. And now we need to create a contouring um, cleanup path. So that way we can come up and tidy up this sidewall in here. So let's go to this one and right click and say create derived operation. 2D milling. Contour. So that way it's going to maintain all my settings and my selections. The only difference is that we're going to uncheck stock to leave. Okay, that one's already unchecked. And then multiple depths. We're going to take off multiple depths. So we're going to do a full depth pass on this all the way up to the sidewall. Hit OK. And I want to just check this to make sure there's no stock to leave or that there is stock to leave. Yes, okay, so we're good. And let's go ahead and simulate this whole thing so far. Because I know we kind of rushed through that, but you'll get to see what happens. So if I hit play, it's going to take off 16th of an inch increments on this slot until it reaches the bottom. And it's going to leave a little bit on the side of the wall there. Okay, and then once it gets there, there we go. It's going to start cleaning up that portion of the slot. And it's going to be green, should be green on all sides. Let's see here. Doesn't look like it reached the bottom. Okay, so we've got a problem there. So let me close this. Come back to this one, or this one right here. Edit. And let's go make sure stock to leave is unchecked. Okay. And then this one. We need this selection to go down to this face. I think that's where we screwed up before. So on this one, we didn't change our height tabs. So if I go back to heights, I can uncheck. So you can see that I had this face still selected from the previous one because we duplicated it. So uncheck and select that one as our bottom depth. So we should have this one going down to the bottom of that, this one going a little bit further down, and this one a little bit further down. Let's simulate it one more time. And make sure we're green on all sides, except for this first pass on the sidewall. Okay, so it should go until it's green right here. Speed that up a little bit. Okay, yep, we reached the bottom now. And then on this back side for the spoke, yes, we reached the bottom there as well. And now, let me bring this back right here. Now we have a separate operation to come back in and tidy this up. Now, ooh, I plunged right there, so we're going to have to fix that. But you can see it's coming in and cleaning up this blue section right here up until the sidewall. That will be kept as a separate operation, so that way we can just take a little bit, a little bit more off each time. So that way we can fine tune the sidewall so we get a nice tight fit on our truss rod. So let's. Go back into this one and check our entry positions or our leads it lead ins and lead outs because that's typically when you see stuff like this that's typically where it's coming from so i'm going to come to linking and just uncheck lead in and uncheck lead out so that way it's just going to plunge 
So let's simulate this one more time and I'll speed it up so we don't have to watch the whole thing. Make sure we don't crash into our model at any point. Okay, we are good. That slot has been cut out and now we can move on to the headstock. So the first thing we're going to want to do in order to start working on the headstock is we're going to want to cut a little bit of a contour around it. So that way we can give our other tools when we come back in and clean up the surfaces more room to work with. So let's go ahead and set up a 2D contour. So 2D contour. And let's change this to our quarter inch flat end mill. So we'll do, that's a ball end mill, quarter inch flat. That's a short one, so we'll do our longer one. Okay, and now what we need to do is pull up our sketches for our fixture. Let me see here. Okay, so we're going to use this profile right here. Oh, sorry, not that one. There we go. The reason, the reason I did this, I created a separate sketch when I was building my fixture that had the entire profile of my neck because when I modeled the neck, I didn't actually set up a sketch that looked like this. And so it's actually quite difficult to select the individual portions of a neck when you have 3D geometry. So instead, I'm referencing a sketch for my contour. And so you don't have to do it exactly like this, but basically just make sure that you have a sketch of your entire outer contour of your headstock, or not your headstock, but your entire neck, and you can use that as your, as your cutting profile. So let me go ahead and hide the sketches now. So that's what we're going to use for our contour. And in the Heights tab, we're only going to go down to the face of the headstock. Because when we flip it over, we're going to end up cutting down the rest of the way. But this just allows us to clear out enough material so that way we can work on the headstock. So let's do passes and multiple depths. Because we're going to be plunging our way through. So I'm going to do 16th of an inch depths. And then uh, multiple finishing passes. So this way we do it in more than one uh, radial pass. So that'll give us a bunch of extra space for our tool to come in. And you'll see that in a second. So I'm going to do two passes of 0.125 inches radially. And let's hit OK. And so you can see here I've got one pass on the outside. And then I step in and create another pass. And the whole point of that was just to give me a pretty large gap here. So that way my other tools have more freedom on where they are cutting. And so we are now good there. And let's move on to the roughing strategy for the top of the headstock. Um, so if we hide this right here, we need to use a 3D roughing strategy because we have varying curvature right here. It's not like a straight wall down. And so 2D has a little bit of a tough time with um, detecting what it should cut right here. So we're going to do a 3D adaptive clearing. You can click here or up here. And make sure you have a quarter inch flat. And yes, our speeds are set up. And then here's where a lot of people get stuck. So stock contours is really important for these types of operations. Because if I just hit OK right now, let me show you what it does. You can see that what it's trying to do is it's trying to cut all of the available stock down to that depth. And what we need to actually do is limit what portion of the stock we're allowing Fusion to cut. So that's what Stock Contours does. So if I hit Edit, and I come back to here, and I hit Stock Contours, and I select this right here. So by selecting this 3D geometry, like this wing right here, it allows me to select that entire contour, and then it kind of projects that down, and then says this is the only area of the stock that we're removing material from. And then what I can also do, if I, I can come down to here to model, and this allows you to kind of override what the automatically detected geometry is going to be. So we can say, even if there's other stuff within this, we actually only want it to machine this surface and this surface. We don't care about the holes. We don't care about anything else, just these two surfaces. And so if I hit OK, Let's see what it looks like. 
Okay, so I actually made a mistake. As you can see here, it's still cutting the outside. So what we need to do come back in is we didn't set up our machining boundary. So the stock selections covers what portion of the stock is it expecting to model or not model to cut. But the machining boundary is actually what actually limits the tool of where it can go. So this just limits the amount of stock, but this limits the tool. So we didn't have both of those set up. So we can say selection, machining boundary, and we can say the same thing. And so now we have both a green and a yellow line kind of on top of each other. And we can say, can the tool go outside of the boundary? Or does it need to stay within? Or does it need to be on center? So let's go ahead and say on center and see what happens. Okay, now you can see that not only did we have the amount of stock to remove limited, we also had where the tool was allowed to go and what surfaces it's cutting. And so by doing it that way, we ended up with much better results. So, but you can see that what it's doing is it's plunging down to the full depth and cutting that out and my cutter or my CNC can't handle that. So we need to come back in and change it to multiple depths. So if I come back in here to our passes tab, and right now it says stock to leave, but let's do uh, maximum roughing step down. So there's no multiple depths in this feature, but you can give it a maximum step down. We'll do 0 0.065 just like before. And fine step down, this is when it's on like a tight contour right here, do we want a different size step down or do we want it all to be the same? And so I'm just gonna call it Go ahead and make that exactly the same by doing 0 0.065. And let's hit OK and see what happens. OK, it's generating. That's looking pretty good. Let's do a quick simulation to make sure we don't run into any errors or anything like that. So I'm just going to simulate these two now that we've got the truss rod cut. And let's see, do we have any errors? It's going to take a second. It doesn't look like it. So my tool is going to come around the boundary in two radial passes to give my tool some room. And then it's going to come in and do 16th of an inch increments, whittling away this material right here. So let's speed this up a little bit. Keep it going. Now we shouldn't see anything turn green because we did leave some stock to leave. And that's totally okay. So let's go ahead and hit OK or close. And now we just need to actually come back in and clean up the rest of this. And I'm going to show you a really neat trick that you'll use sparingly, but occasionally it can be a game changer if you want to avoid a tool change. So we're going to set up a parallel tool path to come in back and forth and clean up this area. Now, we have a flat section right here. So let, let me click off that. We have a flat section right here, and we have a curved section right here. And ball nose end mills don't do a particularly good job of leaving a flat surface, but they do a great job of leaving a nice surface on a curved section. But if we look at our end mill, so let me, let me see if we can do this. Hold on. So I'm actually just going to quickly open up a new design, and I'm going to show you. What I'm talking about. So if I make a quarter inch end mill, let's just pretend this is an end mill for a second. It obviously has a flat bottom. But if you look at it from this angle, like from an angle, it doesn't have a flat bottom. So if we're cutting, let's say, kind of like that, then actually what we're using is basically a ball nose end mill. And so I'm actually not going to change to a ball nose end mill to clean this up. I'm going to use my flat end mill because when I'm on this surface, it will be at an angle um, to this surface. And so it actually will act like a ball nose end mill without having to do a tool change. So let me show you that. So let's do uh, 2D. Actually, no, we want 3D parallel. And we want to do set up the same things, so we want to do a machining boundary. Let's do selection, and we want to use this as our selection. And then model, we're going to say these surfaces right here. 
And let's say that the tool can only go on center. And then, actually, you know what? We're not going to do that. We're going to say it can go outside the boundary. And maybe we'll adjust that in a second. And then heights, we want it to go down to this surface right here. And then in passes, we don't need any multiple depths. We don't need any stock to leave. But if I just hit OK, it's probably going to orient it this way. And that will not work using this trick because you'll see that we're cutting with a sharp point from cutting in this orientation. So we need to flip the orientation to be going in the Y direction. So let's go ahead, go back to Edit, come over to Passes, and then the Pass Direction, we're going to say 90 degrees from its current position. Hit OK. And so now it's going in this direction. And so let me go ahead and simulate this. So you can see what I'm talking about, but we will need to change our step over. So we're going to simulate these two. So it's going to mill out most of the material. All the way down. And then it's going to come in. And you can see that it's, it's cutting on that flat section right now. But let's see if we can look at it from this angle as it's coming up. Uh, let's get a little bit further in. Okay, let's slow it down. So as it's coming up the surface, it's acting like a ball nose end mill because we're dragging up. And you can see it's leaving a cusp as if it's a ball nose end mill. So we actually don't even need to switch tools at this point because of the orientation of this model. So I hope, I hope that's obvious what's going on here because since we're not cutting perpendicular but we're cutting essentially the cutter is at an, at an angle to the surface that it's cutting. It's acting like a ball nose end mill. So I don't even have to switch tools. So let's just hit play. Go all the way through. We didn't have any errors. We didn't crash into our stock. Although this step over right here is a little, a little extreme and it's not going to leave a nice surface finish. So let's come back and change that real quick. So let's right click this and hit edit, come to passes, and then step over. Right now it's half the tool. So let's make it something pretty small. So let's do 32nd of an inch, hit OK, and let's re simulate this. So mill out most of the, hog out most of the material. And now it's doing really fine little step overs. You can actually see right here, this might make it more obvious, there's a curved section right here, so it's actually acting like a ball end mill. And it's leaving a nice flat surface on here, which is great. So we're kind of getting a two for one right now. And yes, everything turned green. We've reached our final depth, and we have just tiny little cusps that we can sand out once we're done. So that's actually all we need to do for the top. Um, although we could, if we wanted to, go ahead and bore these out. So why don't we go ahead and do that first? Um, since we're already here and we have access to this geometry, we'll do that and then we'll flip the part over. So let's go 2D boring operation. And actually, I'm going to hit... No, we can do this. And then we'll select all of these circles right here. And then we say in the heights... Do we want it to go to the bottom of the hole, or do we want it to go to the bottom of the stock? Um, in this case, let's just go ahead and go to the bottom of the stock. So stock bottom. And then, actually we can go stock bottom minus a little bit, because we'll end up hogging out that material later. So that way we don't crash into our stock. So let me go 0.3125, or nope, sorry, 0 0.3125. So we're going to go just a 30 second above the bottom of the stock. So you can see my volute right here kind of comes to that point. So we're not going to reach all the way down, which is great, so we don't crash into our fixture. Hit OK. And let's go ahead and simulate this entire setup. So now we've got the top. Let's bring our fixture back. OK. So this is what it's going to look like. And we can hide our model. And let's simulate this whole thing. So the first thing you did was we did an eighth inch end mill coming in the truss rod slot and hogging out most of that material. And then it starts cutting out the remainder for the spoke. 
and then it comes up and does a cleaning pass and then switches to a quarter inch end mill. And then we start doing the contour around the body, or not the body, but the neck. And then it's going to, now that there's material there or material removed and we have enough clearance for that bit, we can come in, remove most of this material. Almost there. And we didn't have any stock to leave, or we did leave some stock to leave, so it's not green yet. And now we're using our flat end mill to both cut a flat planar surface on the top of the headstock, but also a little bit of a ball end mill action on this cutaway. And we are reaching all the way down to the holes right here, so we're good there. And then last but not least, we come back in and bore those holes. So that gave us all of the all of the geometry that we needed access to from this side done. And now all we have to do is flip the part over and start working on the other side. So I'll see you in a second. All right, so let's close this out and let's bring in our other fixture and show our body again. So now we have our part flipped. So we had the other fixture where it was like this. And now we have to just switch our fixtures flip the part around, and now we're ready to start setting up for the other side. So let's go ahead and create a new setup. Give it a second to load. And what we're going to do is we're going to say the exact same thing we did before. So origin point, selected point, this corner. And let's set our X and Y axes. So X will be here, Y will be here. And then we'll flip our X. So it goes from this side to the other side. And then we'll do model is our neck. Fixture is this component in here. So that one right there. And then our stock is from solid and is that body right there. So that should be our setup. It's nice and easy because we did all the work up front. And so now what we need to do. Since we still have our quarter inch bit, is to go ahead and do a contouring operation. So that way we give ourselves or our bit some more room when we're doing the 3D roughing strategies. So we kind of preemptively avoid some of those rapid collision into our stock errors. So let's set up a 2D contour on the headstock, but only the headstock for now. So that way we can leave some tabs on the headstock so it doesn't break free on us. So let's go ahead and do a 2D contour and we still have the tool and let's go contour selection now you, if you hold down the alt key you can select individual pieces rather than the entire thing so we can say here here and here yes the red arrows are on the correct side and then we can set up tabs and before we do that let's go ahead and set our heights so we'll go heights is to selection this face and then we'll do negative 0.25. That way we go down to the depth that we cut the other one on the front side. And then let's do tabs. And then we can set the height of the tabs to whatever height and width we want. So let's do width of let's say 0.75. Give ourselves some pretty pretty meaty tabs. And then let's do the tab height as 0.625 should be fine. Yeah, we'll work with that. Hit OK. And let's do a quick check. So let's hide our let's hide that and let's simulate across these two. So let's simulate both of these real quick. Uh, simulate. And we'll speed up through this. So we go down. To that surface we cut through and then we flip over to the other side and we have some it's giving me an error which is a rapid collision with fixture but that's just because I'm simulating both of these and it thinks the fixture is right here <laughs> so that's okay we can ignore that for the time being and let's play through that let's take off stop on collision 
Let's see, did we go all the way through? No, we did not. So we might need to go back and adjust that. So let's adjust this height here of how deep do we cut that contour on the front side. So let's go back to that contouring operation right here. And we're going to change our heights to, we'll go from there, minus 0.25. So we'll go 0.25 down from the top. And then we just need to make sure that when we do the other side, we're cutting to that same depth. And then we'll leave ourselves some tabs. So we'll hit OK. Go back to this. Let's check that real quick. Contour. Yes, that is going deeper. And then it's cutting that. OK, so we'll go back to the other one. Let's check our heights. So we want to go to selection this face, which is the top one, negative 0.25. In fact, actually, in this case, we want to go the other way. We want to go 0.25 down. So that way we go to the same height. But in this case, we're flipped over, and we can leave some tabs. So yes, there we go. We have some tabs roughly in the middle. Let's make these a little bit taller, so 0.125. And that should give us some nice tabs in the middle. There we go. OK. And then we can just clean those up with a chisel or sand it down, etc. Hit OK. Well, let's go back to our passes real quick and do multiple depths of 0 0.065 inches. And then we want the same thing on the other side where we had two finishing passes. So that way we give ourselves a little bit more breathing room. And we'll do. Two finishing passes of a 0.125 radial cut. Hit OK. And let's see. That's looking a little better. So let's simulate. Let's simulate these again real quick and see what that looks like. So we're cutting on this side first. Let's speed this up to right here. Okay, we cut that contour down. Now we're finishing that. Come through, it's going to think we're hitting the fixture, so we have a few errors. And then on this side, it's clearing that out. Now we're not actually hitting the fixture in this case because the fixture doesn't exist on this side, so I'm not worried about that error. Let's see if those tabs cut all the way through. Yes, they do. So we effectively cut through both sides, but we left the tabs there. So that should be good, and that will allow us to clear out this side of the headstock. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll clear out the neck. So if we come back to this setup, we go 2D, actually it's 3D adaptive clearing. Still have our quarter inch flat, and stock contours, we'll select this right here. Uncheck rest machining, and the machining boundary will be the selection right here again. And then heights, we want to go down to this surface. And then the top is still stock top. And then we want to be able to go both ways, 0.1 in each direction. And we don't need any, we don't need any directions or slot clearing. So let's change our maximum step down to 0 0.0625, actually, Maximum step down, we can do 0.125 in this case, and 0 0.0625 as a fine step down because the actual depth of this relief right here is only an eighth of an inch in my design. And then I'm going to allow it to have a sixteenth of an inch step down on, these, on this little curvature right here. So stock to leave, yes, we still want that. That should be good, but let's check our entry positions because sometimes what will happen is it will try to decide where it wants the bit to enter from and it will just collide with the stock. So we can actually ensure that that doesn't happen by choosing an entry position somewhere on our model. So I'm just going to say I want the bit to enter around this hole. And we can say OK. That's looking good. I don't see it engaging anywhere, but let's see if we run into any simulation errors. We shouldn't. Doesn't look like it. Okay. So we are going to cut a contour real quick, just give our bit some room. 
And then we're going to come in and do an adaptive clearing. Let's see if we can see this a little better. There we go. On this back side of the headstock. Yep, so we are good there. And we can actually still do the same trick with this bit so we don't have to do a tool change yet. And we can go ahead and do a parallel pass on that. So let's do par 3D parallel. And we're going to say, let's see, model, we'll do model surfaces, these surfaces right here. The tool containment boundary will be selection right here. There is no stock contours on these because these tool paths assume that the stock has already been removed. And we'll say that the tool can be on center on the boundary rather than outside. The depth will be to this surface right here. And then we don't need any multiple depths. We don't need any, we can change the step over to 0 0.03125. And that should be good. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we did forget to change the direct, the pass direction of that. So let's go back to edit, passes, and then the pass direction will say 90 degrees. So that way it flips it for us. And we can clean up that surface right there. So now all we need to do is clear out the rest of this material and then with this bit and then come in with a ball nose end mill and do all of our final touches. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're actually going to do first is we're going to do another contouring operation, kind of like what we did with the headstock, but this one will allow to go all the way down to the bottom because our model actually extends all the way down. So let's bring our fixture back, make sure we don't run into that. And let's go 2D contour. Still have our quarter inch flat. And then our contour, or our, let's see. We don't need, well, we will need tabs in a moment, but we'll do it on the back side just to be sure. And then our contour selection will be, let's bring back our sketch, and maybe we can pull it from there. We're going to select these contours right here just this portion of it, like that. Come around, I'm holding the Alt key while I'm doing this so that way I can select just a piece of it. There we go, so we're gonna cut that contour and we can say tangential extension and we'll go out like an extra point one, or quarter of an inch so that way we go past and make sure we clear it. Go ahead and hit, let's just hit OK, see what it gets. I know that it's going to plow through that. So it looks like, we need, let's try multiple depths real quick and see what it does. So passes, multiple depths, 0 0.0625 inches, hit OK. So we're still getting an error message. It looks like with the lead outs. Okay, so we're going to take off our lead ins and lead outs. So let's uncheck lead in and lead out. Hit OK. Check again. So it looks like it is still having some issues here. I might have selected the wrong piece. Let's go back to our, let's go edit. Okay, that's what happened. So you can see that the little red arrow is on the wrong side of the line. So let's go back. Flip that over. Check these ones too while we're at it. This one looks like it's on the wrong side as well. Okay, that all looks good. Let's see if that gives us a better result. Yes, that's what we were looking for. Much better. So that was my mistake because I forgot to flip those arrow directions. And you can see that we're breaching past. So let's simulate this real quick and see what this looks like. Let's hide our sketches. Okay, so we are milling out most of the material on the back side of the headstock. And then while well, we were doing a contour, now we're doing milling out most of the material. And we left ourselves some tabs. And now we're doing our finishing pass with the flat end mill. Okay, 
And now we're doing a contouring operation in sixteenth of an inch depth increments. That is extending all the way past like this. Out, picking up, coming back to the other side, and continuing where it left off. And actually, we might want to do that in two different passes to give ourselves our bit a little bit of extra breathing room. So let's go back one more time, edit, and let's do passes, multiple finishing passes, two, point one two five, like we did on the other one. Okay, let's simulate this one more time, make sure we're good there, and then we can hog out the rest of that material. Okay, clearing it out, left ourselves some tabs, finishing pass, and then we're taking two sets of contouring passes. We don't have any errors, so this is great. Okay, so what's nice about that is that kind of helps take care of this corner as well. So our bit doesn't necessarily need to cut nothing when it's using a ball end mill right here. That might be kind of hard to explain, but you might see what it means a little bit later. So now we can go ahead and just clear out the rest of this material. Now it is important to remember that we just cut all the way through this. And so that comes down to work holding. So in this case, on this side, we left some tabs so we didn't have an overhanging headstock. But on the underside of this, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm going to be using double sided tape so I have access to this entire outer contour or not double sided tape, but blue tape with the super glue method. And so that means I don't necessarily need to leave any tabs on this backside. Although it might be smart just in case later on I take this off and I want to put it back on the machine to refinish something. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and opt not to do that in this case. So let's close this out. And now let's do our big 3D adaptive to clear out all this material. So let's go up to 3D Adaptive Clearing. And then we still have our quarter inch flat. The, the operation after this, we will be switching to a ball nose. So we can go Geometry, Stock Contours. In this case, let's bring up our sketches and say our stock contours is going to be that same sketch we've been using. And then Uncheck Rest Machining. And then geometry, the boundary, we're going to do the same thing, selection, that sketch, and now we can hide our sketch. And then if we go into our heights tab, we can say the bottom height, we want it to cut down to uh, the fixture height. And then we can say passes, we want it to do it in 0 0.065 increments on all both the fine and the rough and then we can say both ways 0.1 optimal load would be great and then we'll leave some stock as well and then I think this should be good so let's see what happens we may need to add some entry positions if we get an error so let's add that in there let it load up for a second it's a pretty big tool path so it might take a minute Okay, we've got a lot of links, but that might not be a problem, but we might be able to change that in a second. Okay, so let's simulate this portion right here. It doesn't look like we're running into any errors, which is great. So we're cutting the contour. Speed this up a little bit. And then we're clearing out all of this material right here. Okay, it looks like it is trying to cut into the headstock, so we're going to need to limit that a little bit. Yep, it's trying to cut the headstock, so we're going to have to limit that. Let's go through the rest of this real quick. Okay, so now we have most of the material hogged out over here. And we still have stock to leave on all surfaces. We will need to probably come back and flatten this piece out right here. But we need to tell it that it can't touch the headstock. So let's close this out, bring back that toolpath, hit edit, and in the geometry tab, we can select the specific model surfaces. 
So let's see if this let's see if this fixes it. We're going to select all of our model surfaces here that we want it to cut. We don't need it to cut the outside ones because the contour already did that. And let's see if that solves it. Okay, it did not. You can see that it's still trying to cut the headstock. So let's come back again. Let's do geometry. And let's, I think it has to do with our machining boundary. So let's change this to, let's see if we can manually select features here. Let's actually go back to where we had it before. So let's hit cancel, bring this back up. And in our stock contours, let's add this section right here and see if we can basically exclude that from it. Hit OK. And let's see what happens. Again, it's a pretty big toolpath. It does look like it's finally doing it. Although it does look like we have a lot of linking operations, so we might need to come back and change that. But yes, it is no longer touching the headstock, which is exactly what we want. So let's see if we can reduce the amount of links here. Because you can see that it's picking up a lot and traveling all the way over. So let's go back to edit. And let's come over to our linking tab. And let's see what we've got here. So we're prioritizing a full retraction. So let's say minimum retraction. And then let's see. Allow rapid retract, yes. Maximum stay down distance. So this might be something we need to look at. So let's try extending this because basically what this does is if the next feature that it needs to start cutting is beyond this length, then it will go ahead and fully retract all the way and travel over. If it's not within that distance, or if it is within that distance, so let's say it's coming from here to here, it won't do a full retract. So let's make this quite a bit longer. So this is probably going to be like 16 inches. So let's make it 12 inches and let's see what happens. Might be able to significantly reduce the amount of linking. It is looking much, much better. It's maybe not perfect. But let's simulate that real quick. It's still picking up quite a bit. Let's go back and look at this. So we still have a lot of links once we get down into these bottom sections there. So maybe we can extend that a little bit more. Let's say it's 16 inches. Okay, and let's try this. It might not change much, and that's okay. I also wonder if we have both ways selected. I need to go back and check that. That might impact that a lot, actually. Let's go back real quick and check. We do have both ways selected. All right, we might have to just deal with that. So let's go ahead and simulate the whole thing. We got the headstock, backside, finishing pass, contour, and then we're hogging out most of the material so that way we can come in and clean everything up. Okay, so let's go ahead and do, let's cut this surface right here because we don't want to cut that with a ball end mill. So let's do that with a flat end mill and then we'll do our final pass with the ball end mill and get this thing looking all nice. So let's close that out and let's just do a, let's do 2D pocket. I wonder if we can do it with a 2D pocket. Let's find out. Quarter inch flat still. 
and we want to cut this surface right here. And let's go ahead and just click OK and see what it does. OK, so it's not going to cut the whole thing. Let's go back to Edit, Geometry. And let's see if we can extend that. Let's do rest machining. <clears throat> no. We don't we shouldn't need that. 2D pocket might be the wrong answer for this. In fact, you know what we can do? We can do a facing operation. So let's actually delete this. Come on. There we go. And let's do a face operation on let's see. Stock contours right there. And then the bottom height instead of the model top. It'll just be this section right here. Let's see if that works. Let's see if we can clean that up. Okay, pretty pretty close actually, not bad. It is leaving a little bit of material up here, which might not be a big deal. But let's go ahead and see if we can adjust that. We will change our passes, our pass direction to going in the y direction and then our step over will make one half the bit in fact let's just do point one we'll do both ways and maybe if we do it that way maybe we can extend the toolpath a little bit that's already much much better so let's go ahead and extend the toolpath just a little bit so we can come back to the geometry tab or sorry not the geometry the passes tab and we can do pass extension of 0.125. That should extend the length of that, yes, by 0.125. Although right here, it might collide with the stock. So let's just double check that real quick. So let's simulate. I wonder if there's an error with collision with stock. Ooh, that was way too fast. Hold on. Speed this up, slow it down, and look at it from the top. No, it is not colliding with the stock, so that is great. So we can go ahead and use this as a cleanup tool to clean up that face for us. Perfect. So now we're at full depth there, and now we're going to switch our tool to a ball end mill. So let's go ahead and set up a parallel tool path like we did with here, but we're going to do it with the ball end mill. So come up to here, 3D, Parallel, and we could do a Scallop or Parallel or a bunch of others. Um, I do like Parallel for this operation. On the body, I preferred Scallops. Um, I don't think it's quite as critical here, and I think you get a really nice result with a Parallel Path on this one. So in this case, we're going to switch it from our flat to a ball end mill. So I want my quarter inch ball. And then our machining boundary, we will do selection. And let's go ahead and choose. Actually, let's do bring back that sketch. Select right here. And we're going to say tool outside of boundary. And then down here, we can say we can specify exactly what surfaces we either want to avoid or which ones we want it to touch. I think that's where I was getting screwed up earlier because the model section just tells you what, mo what surfaces you want to machine, but this one is more exclusive and it says only touch or avoid these surfaces. So I can say, so if I say touch, it's going to force it to touch those ones. If it's unchecked, it's going to avoid those surfaces. So what we can do is leave it off and say we want to avoid these surfaces right here altogether. And let's see if that does it. And let's go to our selection. Let's go down to this surface right here. Let's take off our sketches. And then we can come over to passes. And let's make our pass direction 90 degrees because right now it defaults to X. So we want it to go in Y. You could do it in X, and I'll show you that in a second. 
and we don't need any multiple depths. And our step over will be 0 0.03125, just like before, but this time with a ball end mill. This is looking good. This is looking very promising. So we told it to avoid these surfaces and these surfaces, and so all it's doing is touching these outside ones. So you could do it with this kind of a pass direction if you wanted to, or you could come back to edit passes and flip that direction back to zero, and that will cut in the x direction. That's actually a really good way to do it as well. Um, it does take a little bit longer because you have many more connecting um, connecting features. So the the CNC will have to stop, come back the other direction. Whereas in these ones, it's one continual cut if you do it the other way. So let's go ahead and go back and let's change it back to 90 degrees. Hit OK. So now it's cutting in this direction. So that should be good, although it doesn't look like it's going all the way to the top. So we might need to change our contact point boundary. So let's check that real quick. Let's go edit. In the geometry tab, we can say contact point boundary. What this does, as you can see on the screen, is it allows the tool to go beyond the boundary so long as it's still touching the features that we want to machine. So let's check that. And let's see if it lets us go all the way to the top. That's looking much, much better. Still not quite there, but let's go ahead and simulate it and see if everything turns green. And if it does, then we're good to go. So let's simulate the whole operation. Got the headstock contour with tabs, clearing it out, finishing pass. Then a contour on the neck, all the way down. And then we do our roughing strategy to clear out most of that material. We do have an error message back there, so we'll check that in a minute. And then we do a facing operation to come back in and clean up that surface. Okay. So it is having to go vertical a lot there. So maybe it would be a good idea to do 90 degrees in this case, because you can see what it's trying to do. It's just whittling away that corner, and then it can finally pick up steam. So let's keep watching. It's going to do the same thing to the other side. That's not ideal. Okay, and now it's setting up to go ahead and do the long passes. Let's fast forward this a little bit. So it did actually end up touching and cutting all of those surfaces, even though I was worried about that. So that's good. That means we do have a good program. It's just maybe not ideal for the way I set it up. So let's go ahead and flip that back the other direction and see if we get a better result in these corners. Let's go edit, passes, change this back to zero degrees. And let's see if it shows up a little bit better. We won't simulate the whole thing again. So simulate. Okay, so it's going to come up there. It's going to work its way up the neck. Actually, it's pretty satisfying to watch. Okay. Let's see what it does when we get up here to the neck, or the headstock, I mean. Okay, slow this down a little bit. Okay, so it's still doing it, but in a much better fashion than what it was before. So I'm not terribly upset with that, actually. It's still not ideal, but I guess that's just the nature of the game right here. So it's, it still does have to do it, but not nearly as bad as it was the first time. So let's hide our body, the actual model. And that's what we're left with. So you know what? I think that's pretty good. So 
let's go ahead and take off our fixtures and simulate the whole thing. Um, not take off, but hide our fixtures and simulate the whole thing so we can see what the actual body we're left with is because right now it's it's not showing you really the tabs. So let's go ahead and close this out. Let's hide our fixture. And let's simulate both setups together. Okay, now again, remember it's going to show a bunch of errors because it's expecting the fixture to be there. So we don't actually care about these errors that we're seeing right here. So let's go ahead and play. We're taking our 8th inch end mill, cutting out the truss rod slot, at least the main portion of it. And then it's going to come in and cut this half of it and then this half. So let's speed this up a little bit. There you go. It's cutting that side, then that. And then we have one remaining tool path that we can use to come clean up and, and fine tune the dimension of this for our truss rod slot. Okay, then it's doing a contour of the whole neck down a little bit past the headstock. And then we're clearing out the material on the front of the headstock. And then we're doing the finishing pass with the little trick, so we're still using the flat end mill here. Okay, let's speed this up again. And then we're going to come in and cut those holes. And now we flipped over to the other side. And now we're cutting a contour on just the headstock itself, so that way we can leave ourselves some tabs. Again, ignoring the errors right now, because it's expecting the fixture to be here. So I can show you what it, what it thinks is happening. Uh, where is it? So it thinks that every time it's plunging into this, it thinks it's ramming itself right into this headstock, or not headstock, this um, fixture. So that's, that's why it's throwing all those errors. Okay. Clearing that out. And then we're doing a finishing pass with the flat end mill. So we're able to do a lot with one tool change, and that was kind of the point. So we didn't have to spend, you know, changing our tools six, seven, eight times in a row. And then we're cutting a contour around the edge. And then we're going to hog out most of the material. Okay. Once most of that's gone, then we're going to do a little tiny little facing operation just to clean up the neck pocket. Almost there. Okay, clean up that neck pocket and flatten it out. And then we're doing our big parallel tool path to clean up and get a really nice surface finish and prevent a lot of sanding going forward. So the total machining time for this neck, the way I programmed it for my machine, is about two and a half hours. Um, that's obviously a still a pretty long run time, but not terrible actually considering the complexity of the model we're trying to machine. Obviously if I had a bigger machine and I could use larger bits, then I could definitely take more material off at any given time and really speed this up and get it down to, you know, within an hour or so. Um, but I'm pretty happy with how this is turning out, so let's speed this up a little bit. Okay, going up the neck, and then those tiny little cuts right there. And let's check, do we have blue anywhere remaining on the model? We're good there. We're good in the holes. We are good all the way around. There's a tiny little piece right there, it looks like, but if that actually shows up in the model, that I'd be surprised. That might just be a graphical thing and be easy to sand out regardless. So, and then you can see that we actually did successfully cut all the way through and leave some tabs for our headstock. So this would be the actual finished piece that we would be pulling off of our CNC. And we can just cut those off and pare them away with a chisel 
and sand it flush. Phew, that ended up taking a lot longer than I thought, but thank you to everybody who stayed with me for the whole thing. Guitar necks are definitely the most challenging part of the guitar to machine. They have a very complicated shape, and they require a pretty good understanding of our cam tools in order to get good results with. So the only thing I think that would really top this is an angled neck. And that's a story for another video. If you'd like to support my channel and help me to continue to produce high quality content, or would like to actually download this file for your own reference in your designs, you can find me at patreon.com forward slash Austin Shaner. If you have any questions about this process or would like help from myself or other viewers on something you're working on, you can join our Discord channel where we share ideas, problem solve, and just have a good time. Thank you all for coming. I hope to see you in the next video. This is Austin, signing out.